Hello my dear friends, this is a paint cat and today I want to show you how to paint a really easy and a lovely, good looking, realistic looking rose with a watercolor. We are starting with a sketch, but if you don't want to spend uh, any time for sketching, uh, you can use sketch from um, my Facebook uh, page and uh, just transfer it on a good watercolor paper. Uh, be sure your paper really good quality because uh, the final result uh, really depends from uh, how good uh, materials you're using. First of all, I uh, created circle shaped uh, area and this is our future uh, flower. I want to paint a bud but uh, some of the uh, petals um, will be opened already. I have a photo on the left corner and I'm going to take realistic details uh, from the real roses. Now I draw the main shape of bud. Uh, it's quite simple and other parts of our circle it's gonna be uh, petals that already opening, right? Uh, it's quite easy shape for rose uh, and also I choose the uh, most simple type of view. This is a side view and I think it's perfect for beginners because uh, other types, uh, other angles of views are uh, harder to create and uh, harder to paint. Uh, of course we want to start from easy, from easy painting and drawing and after we know how to paint uh, easy flower we can move to more difficult compositions. Roses usually have uh, small sepals that uh, holding the uh, bud uh, and the roses have five of them so now I draw, uh, draw them uh, it's gonna be a green color it um, and uh, we from this uh, angle of view from the uh, side we usually can see normally two or three of them and others it's um, uh, visible more on the back uh, on the back side of rose just a little pieces of it right also we have to create steam of rose. I don't really like to um, paint a straight one. I like when it's more natural, not straight, right, but have uh, some angle um, on it. So I will create small angle to the right side, mm, like this. I think uh, that's looking good. And uh, we uh, want maybe half a little bit of uh, leaves mm, on left and right side that will give uh, our more complete and natural look for our rose. Uh, leaves never go in too close to the flower if we're talking about roses of course so uh, don't uh, draw it too close to the uh, flower right to the bud uh, I will make a little distance mm, maybe in natural it's even more distant between um, bud and uh, leaves but here I have not a lot of space I'm painting today on the um, A4 size of paper it's a 20-30 centimeters uh, on sides and uh, if you want to create, for example, the uh, composition of flowers, you're going to have more than one, uh, three, five, uh, even more mm, roses in one painting. You can choose also the bigger size of paper. If you know how to paint one rose, it's no the, uh, big deal for you to create uh, the bouquet of uh, roses, for example. Uh, also today, um, we will paint without any background. 
and I'm planning to create another type of flower. I'm I have I didn't make uh, any decisions yet what flower it's gonna be, but um, on uh, my next tutorial, one of them, I will uh, show you, share to you how to paint uh, flowers with the uh, colorful background. Today we're only working on the rose. Now I will um, create some petals on a board because the rows have lots of them, right? Uh, and uh, it's uh, also round shaped. Uh, look how it's going, very soft, no any uh, angles here need to create. And uh, I will have two main petals, left one and right one. Uh, I will use kneaded rubber today as I usually do because uh, this type of rubber not um, making any uh, garbage on the paper so I highly recommend it to you if you want to draw this uh, rose by yourself. Uh, I will keep this rose uh, mainly symmetrical with the tiny details uh, that will be unique uh, for left and right side. Now you can see the bud almost fully symmetrical, right? Uh, and uh, now I created two main petals. And now imagine we have bud in bud. So another one, smallest one inside of this two. And uh, now I draw it just the main shape and when main shape is uh, created we can draw smaller petals in this shape so we going we moving from the main shape to smallest ones that will help you to keep the main shape not ruin it and by the way, this is uh, the main rule of uh, any composition, any painting you're going to create. Move uh, from the general to the specific, specific right? From the uh, main shape to smaller details that we have inside of the main shape. Uh, the uh, biggest mistake uh, that all beginners do, they starting to create uh, big compositions from small details. We all know about that uh, when I was uh, young, when I was uh, studying how to draw at art school, I always uh, was trying to create big portraits from an eye, right? Or from the lips. Um, and uh, But, of course, we have to start from the shape of face and move to other details, eyes and nose and lips. Uh, the rose is just the same. Yes, it's not a face and we don't need to keep the resemble uh, of the our photo. Uh, I don't really like to follow photo, uh, every detail of it. Um, basically, I'm taking realistic details of roses. And uh, by the way, this is my one of my really favorite um, type of roses uh, that have a green and a purple and a rose color on the same petal. Uh, so I'm only taking uh, realistic details, right? Uh, taking the um, spirit of rose but not uh, the uh, every line, every detail of rose. Um, if you want to paint flowers, you have uh, two ways actually. Um, first way, you ha you can have this on your table, the uh, flower you want to paint, and uh, you can take details from the natural rose. Uh, if you haven't a real rose in front of you, you have to use uh, photos, of course, because we're not keeping in our mind, in our memory, uh, all details. We only have memory of main form of uh, flowers in our mind, right? Uh, after my rose is done, I have to clean uh, my paper from 
pencil and uh, I'm going to use for it knitted rubber and I also recommend to you to do it uh, also I will use palette it's uh, one of my favorite one calling a flower uh, type or sometimes it's uh, calling camilla type it's a name of flower also now I'm cleaning my drawing uh, you probably will not see now almost to uh, the lines of prose you have to do the same with your own work because we don't want any uh, lines visible after work will be done and uh, let's start i have this uh, watercolor brush shape and all my uh, materials you can find on the links below what a uh, watercolor i'm gonna use uh, it's all new but the box plastic box it's kind of old it stays with me uh, from my art school's time so i just love to work with it um, but of course all uh, watercolors i already changed with these times today we're going to learn technique uh, wet in wet and we will work petal by petal separately it's very important I will use slightly colored water. Please, you use just a clean water now. I'm using slightly cover it with a pink only to make it visible for you on video. Because if I will use just a clean one, absolutely transparent water, you probably will not see what area I'm making wet. Make it wet, you know, good, uh, put there a uh, nice amount of water. Make sure the whole petal, this uh, big petal, it's all wet, without any missing parts. Uh, I'm not sure yet if it's visible for you completely. Let me add more water with a pinkish uh, color in it like this uh, hopefully now it's visible enough and we made wet only one petal it's uh, extremely important for this technique we have wet in wet but in close separate area only right uh, main color of pink I'm gonna use today it's a mother lake red Mm, it's a cold tone red. If you haven't Mother Lake, please uh, use any cold tone red you have uh, with you. And now I'm not gonna make a smooth borderline of petal. No, I'm making it really sharp. I'm making it uh, with the tiny details as you can see. Don't be rush. Uh, also, uh, Please notice, I now using a smaller brush from the same set that I linked uh, to you below. And uh, I'm not just following my own sketch. Uh, on sketch I created kind of smooth um, side of petal, but now I'm making it, I'm painting it uh, more interesting it's have a small sharp details and look how watercolor floating inside of a wet area and uh, why uh, we need not to be in a rush because watercolor needs time to work well uh, watercolor needs time to go inside of the wet uh, paper uh, as I told you, uh, I like the combination of uh, cold pink and green that uh, these kind of roses have on the petal. So I'm going to use grass green, um, this uh, light sunny green shade. Also, I mixed uh, a little bit of lemon yellow here together. And now I'm just put uh, a small amount of this green shade 
in the bottom part of the petal. So on bottom line we have a deep tone of mother lake red and on side and bottom part of the petal we uh, add there a green. Also I will add a little bit more um, deeper and a colder tone of green. Not a lot, look, it's almost the influence of a color, right? And uh, I can tell you what a color gonna be lighter after uh, the paper will dry completely. Now I choose another brush, it's again, it's the same set, and uh, I will take a little bit more um, Mother Lake red. Uh, all colors I'll use today, almost all colors, it's absolutely clean. Um, don't make uh, over mixing. I mean, don't mix, uh, first don't mix more than two colors in same area of palette, because uh, you're risking to get a dirty shade. And uh, don't mix green plus red. G green plus red, it's opposite colors. If you'll check the circle of Eaton, it's a tool of any um, designer, you will see green and red on opposite sides of uh, that circle. That means that um, when we mixing green and red, any opposite colors together, it's uh, giving us gray, theoretically, but uh, in real life it's giving us a really strange and dirty color. So don't mix it on a palette. Let color flow into each other in a petal. Now this petal, I'm actually like how it's looking now. I'm kind of happy with the result. Uh, maybe I will add a little bit more um, color. You can do whatever you like here uh, till uh, this petal is uh, staying wet, right? You can add color, make it uh, more light, make it deeper, but while it's getting dry and drier, stop it and wait till it will dry completely. Now we're gonna move to the another petal, but look, uh, it's not a petal close to first one. When first one still wet, please don't paint anything close to it, because uh, other way colors from second petal can flow into the area of the first one. Look, I choose now petal that uh, haven't the common border uh, with the first one. Uh, same technique, we made it wet inside, the whole petal now is wet. Again, I changed my brush, I uh, choose the uh, smaller size brush and uh, color the same, it's a model lake red, clear uh, color from the box. And uh, the borderline I'm creating now, again, more interesting than I did it with a pencil. I ha uh, it has some sharp detail and watercolors, again, it's floating inside of wet area, but uh, the border that I created uh, close to dry paper, right? It's uh, between dry paper and wet paper, so uh, the border on a dry paper staying sharp, the border on the weight area floating inside. And look how beautiful! How natural this uh, detail looking now. I'm using bigger size brush, watercolor brush, to blend watercolor a little bit inside. You can check how your own petal looking now and uh, again you can create any interesting shades, mix color inside of one wet area. 
please don't mix it on your palette. Uh, choose clear green and put it inside of wet area. And watercolor will mixing there by itself. And this is the main quality of watercolor. That's why we actually love watercolor because it can create so amazing, so beautiful gradients inside of wet area. This is uh, one of my favorite techniques, wet in wet calling, right? That's mean uh, watercolor, wet watercolor, color that have enough water inside of it, um, mixing on a wet paper. Just for nice control, for better control, don't um, paint petals close to each other. So colors will be not floating to the wrong areas. That's it. So we just going step by step, petal by petal, and we're creating a rose in the end. Now uh, I want to uh, I want to paint uh, the center of the board, and it's the most dark um, detail here in rows because here we have a really deep shade don't put there any black for deeper shading no just just take a really intensive shade of uh, mother lake red from the box right don't put there a lots of water just a little bit and intensive intensive mother lake put it inside of the center of the rose. Now look, I'm going to move another petal and it's close to our bar center, but I leave thin uh, dry line between two details of the rose. Now I'm working on the end of the petal and look, yes, watercolor flowing inside of wet area, but it's not gonna mixing with the dark center of our uh, rose. Again, I left, I left a really thin line, thin dry line between these two details. So uh, we have two ways how to work with it. We can paint petal by petal and petals uh, have a distance between each other, right? As we did with the first and the second petals. Or we can do, we can leave a thin uh, dry line between details we are creating close to each other. Uh, again, I can create this, uh, I can paint this uh, tiny petal close to previous one, but look, I'm not mixing it together. I paint it separately. Uh, I not creating the same wet unit, right? Uh, with the next petals. Petal by petal with the white dry lines between uh, small details. And in the end, I can tell you this uh, dry, white dry lines will give us effect of uh, the uh, really uh, light um, ends of the small petals inside of the rose. So we are not going to blur or blend it in the end. So just keep it clear. Uh, also, I'm almost completed a uh, small petal uh, on the front side of inner part of the bar and uh, this petal uh, quite big already so I can put here green and uh, purple together. Those uh, smallest ones that I painted before uh, with just mother lake, uh, lake red uh, I didn't put any green there because uh, areas of petal way too small, but uh, as soon as I have a big, bigger, let's say not a big, just a bigger uh, size of petals where I can uh, use at least two shades of watercolor, 
uh, I am adding a little bit of a green don't put many right don't put uh, don't uh, paint it too green uh, basically I share I share to you all the technique and uh, all you need to do to paint like this it's a practice now you can definitely see the shape of rose we already have right um, uh, now first petal we painted it's already absolutely dry absolutely dry so i can um, paint a petal next to it on the right uh, side and now see it's uh, dry already mm, i can go really close to first petal again uh, my watercolor not going to flow into it anymore because uh, paper there already dry uh, again i took lots of uh, uh, nicely pigmented uh, model lake red and creating this interesting border of petal not uh, painting it too smooth or straight uh, i'm trying to explain uh, every step i'm doing every thoughts i have in mind when uh, i'm creating when i'm creating my paintings because uh, i believe it will help to you to improve your uh, own painting skills and uh, to improve your watercolor techniques especially uh, this one wet in wet uh, sometimes it's looking really difficult especially if you're looking only at result of uh, this technique because uh, wet and wet giving us really smooth transfer color to color I think for beginners even um, it can be um, looks as impossible to repeat, right? Paintings uh, that uh, created with a wet in wet techniques, but trust me, if you know all the steps and uh, you will practice a little bit, you'll get better result with time. Now look, I can really go close with this wet area to area number one where we started to walk because uh, first uh, area already dry uh, and this is how we go wet in wet it's not the fast technique especially if you want to create nicely detailed compositions but um, uh, for example you can use uh, uh, high, higher dryer uh, it will give you a little uh, faster result but also it will help you to keep the shape of the rose uh, more solid because if you will make dry petal and after move to another one you can um, create you can paint petal by petal right without big distances uh, I'm not using hair dryer uh, today. Sometimes I do if I want to um, faster result, as I said. Today I'm not in a rush. Uh, I really like this kind of roses and uh, I have now lots of pleasure to paint it. Now look the interesting detail I'm gonna make. It's a white uh, white line that will give us effect of uh, turned out petal uh, what you need to do uh, while you will uh, wet the petal uh, close to first one leave please a really thick line between the new petal we're going to paint now and the first one uh, just make it leave it dry don't put any water and uh, first look what i'm doing and after repeat it right look how it will look in the end because probably uh, i'm not sure yet but uh, maybe it's not uh, very visible for you now this thick white line uh, when we were walk 
working with the center of rows, lines was really thin, really thin. But this line uh, needs to be thick. Look, now I choose another brush, bigger one, because uh, this petal I want to create uh, more red, more um, uh, deep toned uh, with the model lake. Let's blend it a little bit. I'm also using a napkin in my left hand to clean uh, and control color on my brush. Uh, let me blend here a little bit more. This type of roses have uh, so many uh, variations of colors. Now I'm blending. I just have patience, you know, because I need to create a smooth uh, transfer from dark color to almost uh, um, soft and greenish light color in the end. And now look, I'm not gonna go close to red line on petal number one. I'm leaving a thick line and this thick line give us, giving us the view, the effect of petal that turning out. Let's add a little bit more color, make the effect visible. Now I think you can see the result of this thick line. See, we can play a little bit in this technique. Uh, the distance between areas, wet areas, uh, can give us effect of uh, details even. And I'm not using any white now. All white details you can see inside of this rose. It's just a paper that I keeping uh, dry without any color. Of course, we have to use a photo or real rose in, uh, in front of us, because it's not possible to keep these tiny details in your mind. Uh, if you are a gardener and you're working with the roses daily, yes, you have, you keeping in mind uh, all unique details of, diff of different flowers um, and uh, you have uh, lots of experience with the flowers but if you are not a gardener, not uh, working uh, with the flowers in a daily room, of course um, you have to uh, work with the nature or to use a photo but again it's uh, just details I'm taking from photo but I'm not transferring photo on a paper. It's not um, hyper realism now. Uh, it's just a watercolor rose. And you know what? If, uh, uh, let's say, painting, it's a reflection of reality, right? But in this case, watercoloring, it's a reflection of painting because it's absolutely unique uh, paintings that giving so light, so airy, so weightless uh, effect uh, view of this rose. And uh, if you will look on the real rose and uh, on the watercolor rose, uh, you will probably see that uh, watercolor ones uh, it's uh, idealized uh, flowers, right? So that's the feeling I want to create with my uh, paintings when I'm working with a watercolor. Now our rose have a shape, have a color and uh, half of it already dry. So just uh, let's complete the details uh, we still have left here. Uh, don't be rush if you're working with a watercolor. One drop when you know when you clean your brush, just one wrong drop and you can uh, completely ruin the effect. 
uh, you have to be careful you have to be uh, really patient and uh, relaxed uh, let's see probably uh, my rose is done I like how it's looking for today we still have some uh, details uh, to complete here but uh, I don't want uh, probably to touch uh, this rose anymore what do you think uh, is it a good looking right I think it is uh, oh no wait <laughs> uh, it's a small piece here, still uh, didn't complete it yet, uh, but uh, it's just uh, a small, small, tiny area, that's it. But no, let me make it a little bit deeper toned with the model like that. Yeah, like this. And the borderline, the white borderline of the petal next to it now looking uh, more visible and nice. Uh, everything now here already dry uh, and be sure it's dry because, uh, you know, paper, uh, it's really thick. Mm, I have water paper um, 280 grams. Uh, it's a good one. I like to work with it uh, with a watercolor. And now I'm working with the supples. Uh, the same technique, absolutely same, uh, but uh, as a main shade to make for you areas visible, I'm using now light light green. Uh, you can clear, you can uh, use clear water. Mm, and uh, I even recommend to you to change water after red, after we are, we are walk working with a red color. Uh, and uh, now uh, both petals, bottom petals dry, so we can be uh, absolutely sure the green color not gonna transfer to the petals of rose. And we can just add green i'm using deep green or it's calling sometimes viridian green mm, i'm adding it on a wet area and it's only floating everywhere where paper is wet um, the same technique possible to paint with acrylic color but uh, just put more water into acrylic color Mm, acrylic it's unique uh, dyes it's unique paints because same time we can use it similar to oil or similar to watercolor if you want to use it acrylic um, as a oil paints you using as it is in the tubes if you want to use it as a watercolor just put there more water make it liquid uh, so if you're not sure with what uh, dyes with what materials you want to work later in the future i recommend to start uh, not from uh, watercolor uh, but to choose a set of small tubes of uh, acrylic dyes and uh, with acrylic you can try just the same technique as well right the paper the uh, brushes you need the same i moved to another sample and it's also the same technique uh, wet in wet i created area that shaped as a sample and now i add there uh, more deep toned green and uh, blending a little bit uh, inside of area I'm not going out of the wet area just blending a little bit color inside of a wet uh, area on a paper as you can see there is really nothing hard in this technique 
it's just a question of time and question of uh, your attention how really you want to learn how to work wet and wet and uh, this technique also uh, nicely using uh, in uh, paintings uh, not realistic ones uh, but uh, with the fantasy flowers fantasy uh, paintings so uh, you can try it uh, with rose or with uh, any decor it's just the same you making the wet area and playing with the watercolor inside of the wet area if you want to learn uh, how to mix color in wet area how to work with the colors uh, join my channel i have a tutorial another one about wet and wet and uh, it's a planets one we are creating together nine planets and in each planet inside of each planet we are learning how to work with the watercolor we're learning a different uh, ways to mix and uh, how to create some effects special effects uh, with a watercolor and uh, this tutorial will help you to work with a watercolor better. I know um, sometimes this kind of uh, paintings recommending as a painting for beginners but um, I'm not really agree with it because uh, it can be hard to start with. Uh, I'd say the uh, acrylic colors easy more easy to control because it's not so watery uh, try them all you know i have also tutorials about uh, acrylic uh, techniques on my channel and also we are uh, painting together paint by numbers and it's also uh, techniques about um, uh, work with acrylic so um, any any work any paints you do helping to you to improve your um, painting skills and uh, leading you to better results with your compositions uh, it's really no matter with what colors you are painting at the moment if you want to know any new right any new colors techniques uh, other ways uh, to use to paint some new uh, plots it's just uh, the question of your uh, curiosity just uh, take it right now paint what you want right now and it's leading you to better progress Mm, yes, I know some beginners uh, care about how successful they are from the first try, but uh, trust me, first try most of the time not really successful. I recommend to you to um, repeat this tutorial at least two or three times to understand better how to control watercolor and you will see even the second try will be better than the first one but again just have patience and don't be a rush and also i always recommending uh, to make a breaks a breaks because the uh, most effective time uh, for us when we are working with something new especially it's uh, 40 minutes uh, till one hour time more than this uh, usually um, we are feeling already too tired to understand something new and we can do worse than we can we can get the worst result than we actually can just because uh, we have to take a break if you will remember your time from the school, uh, all lessons 
uh, actually lasts 40-45 minutes right and after we have a break and uh, just follow the same rule trust me it's working now I'm um, working with this team and it's a darker shaded right under the flower because there we have cast shadow and it's lighter in the end now we are moving to the uh, green leaves and here just the same technique it's a wet and wet but shade of water uh, with I'm making uh, area wet I'm choosing already deeper green here I don't want to create a lot of details because it's not a center of my composition uh, the center of my painting it's a rose of course so I don't want to take attention of my viewer from the center but still we can create a little bit of details nice details for green leaves as well for example it's the line of leaf now see I added some detail uh, with the end of a brush and now look I'm going to add into this wet area I'm adding again the uh, model lake red why I'm doing this first because it's giving not a really reddish um, accent of color uh, when this cold red mixing to green it's giving us more brownish uh, effect it's like a red brown color but also if you will look at real roses you will actually notice that uh, some um, green leaves have red accent red details on it uh, some green leaves um, even not green <laughs> actually it's more purple or violet or uh, violet green uh, that's why I added Mother Lake inside of the green leaf and also I like to use um, the same color and in different part of uh, my paintings it's giving you know more common look uh, more common effect for the whole uh, painting Mother Lake in green leaf bounding the leaves uh, to the main rose right and we uh, we have a more balanced um, painting in the end if you have any doubts uh, in it just check the result painting um, in the end of my video and you will see it's really really looking nice so I like this effect and I don't uh, like when uh, green leaves having jet green inside. I think it's looking a little bit too flat, not uh, natural, not interesting. But it's always up to you. If you um, working, especially if you're working with a natural rose and you see there any other shades, just follow the nature uh, paint what you can see right now in front of you some roses really haven't a uh, purple um, shade inside of greens it's more having yellowish or sometimes it's a sepia or uh, burnt umber there right uh, not uh, purplish uh, shades I'm moving now to another green leaf. Mm, again, I using green water to make area inside of leaf uh, wet. I added more water and the brush I'm working with now it's big size on brush. Uh, I don't want to create 
same uh, detailed view as I did with the rose. Uh, petals uh, more detailed and leaves gonna be uh, more common. Uh, also a little bit of Mother Lake red inside and just a little, not everywhere. Uh, color will mix into each other and give us some uh, you know different shaders because they mixing on a paper. Again I'm not mixing colors on a palette. I'm just mixing it on a paper. Uh, it's close to technique. If you're painting with me um, paint by numbers, it's close to technique free mixing on a canvas. Please check also. Now I want to create uh, more details on my leaves. I uh, I'm doing it with a, a dry brush clean and dry brush. It's a flat oval shaped from the same uh, brush set. And uh, while this uh, mm, leaf half wet, I'm just creating a small streaks. And uh, almost after each streak, I'm cleaning brush with a napkin. That's it. Uh, just enough. Don't uh, make more details. Uh, again, it's not a center, not a main part of composition. It's just a supportive detail that giving us the better feeling of natural rose. Uh, I created green leaves uh, on the right side and uh, I also want to create some of them on the left side. Uh, I will use the same technique. Rose have a lots of petals, right? <laughs> and leaves so we can train better. And in the end it's giving us more experience how to work with the watercolor. And uh, now I'm also creating small connecting twig uh, between leaf and uh, the steam. And uh, I painted it with uh, Mother Lake Red. Again, I explained why. Uh, and I hope now you can see uh, right side leaves already uh, almost uh, dry. You can see it's looking really uh, good and natural. This uh, color in green uh, when it's mixing in green, right? Uh, I hope you will follow my recommendation and you will try also mix uh, green and uh, mother lake together i i just love uh, this mixing of color not gonna creating better detailed this one it's just enough uh, and uh, i uh, want to paint uh, two leaves two more uh, here and i think it will be enough. Uh, look, I'm now working with the tip of brush, with a really thin tip of brush. That's it. Now when line of leaf is ready, I can fill the area of the leaf with the color and the water. And I have interesting line of leaf right and i already have a color inside the area inside of the leaf is wet now of course i will <laughs> add there a little bit of uh, mother lake because i like it just can't ignore it and uh, maybe i will add more deeper toned green um, maybe. Uh, let's see if uh, it will be needed. Again, let me complete the uh, last leaf I have here. Again, I'm working first with a line of leaf and then filling the area of leaf with water and color. Work going fast now because we almost done right we don't need to create here a lots of details 
let me show you how to create uh, another strix here i need to put first a little bit of uh, my leg again it's a tweak that connecting leaf to steam and now let me take a little bit more model lake put there into a wet area of the leaf and just a little bit yes I just like uh, how it's setting here very good very nice and uh, actually the last details we have it's uh, streaks right right leaf on the right side it's already dry and look it's also possible to create a streak if we uh, have a dry leaf already i put a little bit of water it's a wet uh, brush now a little bit of water on a brush and now i'm just painting thin thin lines and it's giving a nice details tiny but still nice details on the leaf these two leaves on the left, left side it's still wet and effect is different I'm working with a dry brush and cleaning my brush with a napkin in my left hand different effects try them both it's giving a nice detailing on your composition these roses I created for you uh, in actual time. I didn't make any speed up uh, because I wanted to demonstrate to you the whole process without any, you know, any tricks, just as it is. And uh, hopefully it will help to you to understand that uh, what a color actually is an easy painting, but, but it's... Um, asking from us patient and uh, time uh, and accuracy of course yes what a color needs it the uh, very last detail i want to create it's the end of uh, steam uh, i put here a little bit of water and a green color and now i want to make it more light I'm doing it with a dry brush. I'm cleaning my brush at the moment uh, with my left hand. I have a, a napkin here. That's it. The end of um, steam is done. And uh, uh, here also I missed the end of the tweak. That's it. Uh, I recommend to you all sign uh, all your paintings and arts you are creating um, and uh, I will do the same I will set my own I choose a model lake color for it and our rose is done please let me know uh, if you like this uh, tutorial also remember you can find the sketch you can use uh, on my Facebook page uh, welcome join me there and uh, share to me your roses. It was a painting cat. I wish you all the best.